Hey there, fish keepers. Dean here. Just starting off with my Corridorus Garii tank. It's been doing really well. Got lots of red fire shrimp in here. And a whole bunch of Pandacoris. Looks like the Corridorus Garii are going to get ready to breed soon. So hopefully that occurs in the near future. Over the last few days I've just switched them over to feeding on more live foods and I've been doing some more water changes so about 50% every four or five days and uh, the pandacories that are in here with them have been going like crazy so maybe they're releasing some pheromones because I see the male Corridorus garii are starting to color up pretty good and they're starting to display some breeding behavior um, they also get the odd red fire shrimp to snack on in here, so they're pretty much continuously getting live foods. So I'll go back to this tank after because I've got a lot of really cool new plants in here that uh, I want to talk about a bit. So we'll move on to the Kalitawa. I rescaped their tank a bit from that last video that I did. I couldn't handle the algae. It uh, was just too much for me. I wanted to do an algae scape, but I've got such good crypts in here that I'm going to have to switch this one over. So the uh, rocks that I've got in the front there, uh, they just collect algae. So I And there's too much light on this tank. So... I am going to switch that over to sand. Uh, it'll look good. I like the way the rocks looked until they got covered in hair algae. And uh, it looks like that's going to be tough to get rid of altogether. So I'll slowly replace it with sand, or altogether replace it with sand, get rid of the hair algae, and then I might add the rocks back in again. Um, just so that I can really keep it under control because when I was under the weather there for a while, I let the hair algae get out of hand. And once that happens, there's no going back. So nothing too new with the Kelly Tawa tank. I've got some Amano shrimp in here, but uh, they, I don't think they'll be able to put a dent in that kind of hair algae. So on to my, this is my Endler breeding colony. There's just hornwort in there. Uh, but I've got my nicest males in this tank. Um, and it's totally full of hornwort. Uh, nothing too new there. Ooh, the light is bright. And then I've got um, some baby amanos that are growing up in this tank. Uh, they were really small when I got them, so they're new. In this tank here, Clean my 90 gallon, thought I'd lost my yellow shrimp colony about two years ago. I've maybe seen two yellow shrimp over the last two and a half years. And uh, I found them again. So when I took apart the um, 90 gallon, there was probably 40 or 50 uh, yellow shrimp in there and some really huge ones. So I put 10 in here to see if I can get them going again. And, uh, yeah, it'd be awesome to have them back. They're really a breedy population. And they, they survived in the 90 gallon with the crazy size and numbers of, of uh, fish that are in it. This is my little aquascape tank where I keep uh, some of my male antlers. And uh, it's doing quite well. The parva, maybe too much light for parva, though. I'm getting a bit of hair algae in it, and the parva just doesn't seem to do as well in this tank. My little tanks, one of them looks like it's leaking, I'm going to have to replace it today. Um, then I've got my grow out tank for usually CPDs that are in here, red neon rainbows. And uh, it's doing well, I switched it over and put some wood in it uh, and then some sand underneath because I put my Corridorus garii in here 
I don't know if we can see them, I doubt it. I can maybe see the fin of one, or it's a reflection. But they're in the back there underneath uh, all the wood that's there. You can see the odd CPD kicking around. But uh, I've either traded, given away, or sold most of my CPD babies right now. So I'm just waiting to grow a new batch. But uh, that um, wood that's in there is awesome because I can put my Anubias on top of it, get it close to the light because there's really low light in this tank. And then uh, give my quarries a big sandy swimming pit space underneath that's really dark so they can hide out in it. Move on to my 10 gallon, the kids tank with all my kid decorations in it. Um, it's doing really great. I uh, That was kind of the look that I envisioned for it. Lots of Anubias and some Crypt. And it's done quite well. I've got some uh, orange shrimp in here. They look a little washed in this tank, but they've been breeding good. This is my one of my grow out tanks. It's pretty scratched, but I've got some uh, teenager sized Cali Tawa in here and some spotted blue eyes and red neon blue eyes as well. And there's some orange shrimp in there. And uh, that tank's been doing quite well. It's been really stable and seems to grow fish well. I've got my, this was my yellow shrimp mothership which crashed because I culled it too hard. And uh, now I've got some reed tetras in here and some of my spotted blue eyes. You can see the males are displaying a little bit there. Oh yeah, the one male has got really awesome finish. You see them just flare there a little bit. Hopefully they stay in the light, it would be nice. Eh, of course not, because I'm making a video. But uh, really gorgeous little fish. Really like spotted blue eyes. And I've got my Fricatus breeding set up here. And I've got some Melanda rainbows in here. And I used to just pull fry out of here, but the Melanda rainbows have been eating the fry, I think, because I haven't gotten any fry since I put the Melandas in here. But I had to move them to another tank that wasn't too warm, so put them in here with the uh, Fricatus blue eyes. And they're doing good, but eating all the fry. And I've got some rosy loaches in there too as well. This tank here, I have to put the light to the front or you just can't see anything in it. This is my oldest continuous setup. And it's petrified wood. I've got some Sundadanio axelrod eye in here. Everything's going to look a little bit washed because I had to put the light right to the front uh, because it's just too dark to even film at all. And uh, this tank I also use as a um, Neocaridinia call tank, so I've got every color under the rainbow of Neocaridinia shrimp. They breed really good when you put them in um, together and mix the strains, but uh, not the prettiest. Lots of clear ones and mottled ones. But the tank's doing good. I need to rescape it a bit because and get a new light and lid for it because it's just really hard to see the fish in it. Um, but they're comfortable. It's really dark and pleasant for them. And my goldfish I've got inside. Uh, they're getting pretty old, but uh, they're doing well. Uh, I've been on top of water changes this uh, winter so far. So my plants are doing pretty good in here. I've got Crypt Balance, Crypt Lutea, Griffith Eye. And even the, they haven't even eaten all the tiger lotus yet. 
So the tiger lotus might actually survive the goldfish, which is shocking. I'm incredibly surprised by that. But uh, the goldfish are doing good, and I get the odd, I put my green jades in here in the summertime to breed, and I pick out the odd green jade shrimp that survives the onslaught. They're usually really big. So pick them out and put them into the A team or B team and uh, get some extra green jades out of the deal. The survivors. Here is the Celestial Pearl Danio continuous breeding setup. It is doing exceptionally well as usual. The, you can see lots of little fry kicking around on the upper right hand side there. And the males are displaying a bit here. So that's awesome. It's usually a battle in the morning for dominance between the two dominant males. You can see them right in the middle there circling each other. Basically every morning there's a dominance battle in this tank. So it's doing really well and have a new group of CPDs coming down the pipe. And then one of my fish that's new is I got some baby uh, Pistogramma Pandero from Kareen and traded her for some Kalitawa females. They all come to the top. These guys are a hungry bunch, uh, but they're doing good. Looks like I've got, she gave me eight, and they were pretty teeny tiny when I put them in here, but it looks like I've got three males and five females, which is pretty perfect. So hopefully down the road, I will soften some water and breed these guys. And uh, pretty excited about that. They're really a gorgeous fish and loads of personality. They've got a major hierarchy going on in here. You can see the one female there on the right. She's the dominant fish in this tank. Not one of the males, the female. She's tough. But uh, this tank's doing really good. I have my Cordoris Gary Eye in here and it was just too small. It was getting really impacted by high nutrients. So we'll move to the other side of the room here. <clears throat> I had my pea puffers in here and destroyed it with Hydra. So my Orange shrimp crashed a little bit, but I got some baby Kelly Tawas in there, and some baby red neon blue eyes, and uh, a mystery fry from my 75. And then this one, uh, the Anubius kind of took over here. I got my Medaka in this tank, and Rescaped it a little bit, but I think I'm gonna have to knock back the Anubius altogether. I'm just waiting for the stem plants to grow in on, that, on it. And it's my B team green jade shrimp tank. And I got my other uh, Endler colony in here. They're doing good. That tank hasn't changed at all. It's just kind of the old stable tank. This tank here, I've got my Asian rummy noses. You can see them there. They're a gorgeous fish. I really like those guys. And uh, they've been doing well in here. And uh, the other thing that's been doing well in here is giant hair grass. I really like it in these tall tanks. I think I'm going to set them all up like this now. Um, with the hair grass in the back. This one I just stuffed the hair grass into the back after the fact to try it out and it, and it seems to be doing really well in here and uh, gives it kind of a cool look. It's a little bit overgrown. It's got to be rescaped. And then my pride and joy and benefactors of a tremendous amount of labor are my 
pea puffers, which you see in the previous video as teeny tinies. They're getting about, I don't know, three quarters grown here. I've got seven of them. They're a tremendous amount of effort to raise. Um, they're only really taking live foods now. I'm trying to convert them over to bloodworms and uh, frozen brine shrimp, but uh, these guys mostly get brine shrimp, so there's a bit of a hydra storm in this tank right now. But uh, they're doing really well. They like uh, baby snails and Daphnia, and uh, I feed them white worms as well, but mostly brine shrimp, hence the hydra. And in the next tank here, I've got my baby fricatas and some baby pandas and baby red neon blue eyes and orange shrimp. Uh, this tank is the first, or actually the second tank that I used no planarion to get rid of hydra and planaria. And it worked awesome. And I'm going to do a little video on that. I've got all the video done for it, but I just haven't... Uh, Put it all together yet um, but yeah you can see no hydra at all and it was crazy for hydra in it so they're doing well so i've got about i don't know 30 or 40 for caddis there and just a few red neon blue eyes and uh, this is my 37 gallon um, corner tank and it's got the Cardinals and green neons in it and blue king tetras. Got one hat hatchet fish which was a, a donation from one of my neighbors and it is a really awesome hatchet fish. It's actually jumped to the tank four times. <laughs> I've picked it up flopping on the floor. Um, when you go to feed it it usually just smashes food and sometimes jumps out but uh, it's been doing really well. You can see my bleeding heart tetras in here. They're a little shy in the morning, but I got this one looking back as a kind of a cave state escape. I've also got the CW155s in there, but they're completely nocturnal. Basically a nocturnal quarry, but they're cool to feed um, when the blue light comes on at night. So you see them all come out there and and make the biggest commotion getting food. Uh, so that tank has been doing quite well. It's uh, really getting overtaken by Anubias though, so i got to maybe dial that back a little bit, but eh, I like having a lot of plant cover in my tanks. And uh, the Blue King Tetras have been breeding in their lots, so anytime you feed them a bunch of live food, they, they breed like crazy. <laughs> And then this tank here, you can see my clown loaches just flew the coop when I came in here. Um, but they're doing really good. This tank here was getting a little bit dirty, so I had to uh, do a big water change on it, do some gravel backing. There's just a lot of fish in here. This is kind of my overflow of fish. So I'm always doing a lot of water changes on it usually but apparently that was enough I was starting to get some hair algae problems in it but uh, these guys are doing awesome and clown loaches are uh, figuring out exactly where they're going to live now because it was rescaped in the back a little bit there's a whole bunch of caves and stuff in the back so they're not quite deciding decided where they're going to live and you can see my Australis rainbow fish in there um, displaying its morning time so they can get pretty bright in the mornings. They're quite a gorgeous fish. You can see there's a Splendida along with those two males as well. But you know, Splendida Australis displaying with each other. So this tank has been doing quite well. I've got a lot of my um, for caddis, blue eyes, extra ones hanging out in here and some extra endlers and there's about 30 panda quarries in here, my Chinese algae meter if you can see in there 
He seems to be fairly tame though. I, I inherited him with the tank. The Congos are doing great. They're spawning all the time. The 20 gallon upstairs, I've just got some red neon blue eyes up here and a few extra CPDs, kind of like a backup colony in here. I have my first baby red neon blue eye grow up on its own in this tank, so that was pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty bushy in here with plants, and you can see my wife's plants are starting to creep in on my fish tank area. Well, the sun is starting to come up, so that is going to ruin my videoing of the fish room. But uh, I just thought I'd share with you a little bit more from the 75. The Ceres Creek Radnocentris are doing awesome in here. That's probably what that baby is that I found in the uh, in this tank on the top. I was just getting some water and a baby moved in there. And uh, this is the Langodandra Moboldi, uh, the kind of pinkish plant in the middle there. It's doing really well. I really like that plant. Um, and then there's my Barclaya Lomfolia, red, which died back over the winter, but there's seeds absolutely everywhere in this tank, and I've got a little container of seeds that I'll show you on the other side. And uh, it's quite a nice plant, so hopefully I can get it to grow from seeds. There's some big seed pod looking things that are about the size of peas right now. It looks like they're growing roots out of it. So I think that might have been my first batch of seeds from the Barclay along folia that have grown up. But we'll see. We'll see what they are. But uh, they're definitely a seed pod from something. Um, you can see I've got lots of fire red shrimp in here that uh, are doing well and, and lots of little panda quarries. They've been breeding like crazy in this tank. They've just about bred uh, almost every day. There's about, there's 27 I think of them. And uh, it, we've had a lot of fronts coming through. So th there's usually one female starting to breed out of the bunch just about every day. I haven't really been collecting the eggs because I'm really trying to get the Corridoris Gary eye bre breeding again so I can distribute those guys throughout the hobby, but I'll take a look on the other side here. So this is the side that I view most of the time, and you can see the I've got the Anubius Pinto growing really well in there. And uh, one thing that I got was a giant hair grass, which I put in the other tank, as you've seen. Um, I've never kept that before, and it's really cool, so it's kind of growing in between the, the Anubius that's right in the front and center in the tank there. But uh, the plants that uh, I've really been impressed with um, over the last little while here, you can see right in the center here is uh, Silver Queen Crypt. It's a really cool plant. Nice variegated leaves on it. Really a neat plant. Um, that I'm pretty excited about. I want to kind of get it to carpet here. It looks like there's a wet tie that got in there on the left. I'll have to take that guy out. And the other plant that's pretty new is this um, Cryptocorn Spiralis Red Tiger. And it's quite a bright red. It's fairly good size too. Like it must be like about 10 inch long leaves so I'm looking forward to getting that one to uh, reproduce in my tank a bit and kind of spread it around. I'd like to have that um, out there in the hobby as well because it's quite a nice plant. And my Vesuvius sword's been, been doing quite well in there too. I almost lost it all but gave this guy a good spot to live and, and he's been doing well there. So, that's about it for my updates on my fish room. Happy fish keeping. Hold on just a minute there. I promised to show my Barclay Longfolia seeds. And uh, I just have them floating here in a plastic container. And if we look closer at them, they're really cool. They have got like little spiky appendages on the outsides of them. 
and uh, there's all kinds of them rolling around in the tank right now. There's a really big seed pod that exploded in there and uh, I'm really hoping that I can get this Barclaya Longfolia Red to germinate from seed and spread it around because it is a gorgeous plant. You can see it in some of my other videos that are on here. So, this time for reals, happy fish keeping!